G'day guys, we are here at Car <laughs> Pelican Waters. Start Golf. again, start right. again. <laughs> it says it right there. Right. Alrighty guys, thanks for clicking on the video today. Thank you for watching Golf Days Australia, the Facebook page's monthly golf show here. This is the July edition here. I'm here in the backyard today because it's a very cool day and I uh, haven't had a chance to get out of the course at all this week. So, elephant in the room, the product on me on the left is August's product of the month from Zippy Golf. This is a fully submersible in the water, sand, all kind of terrain, motorized golf buggy, carries the clubs. I think the English call it a trolley. I think the Americans and the Aussies, we, Aussies, we all call it a, a golf buggy, motorized golf buggy. But there you go, Zippy Golf in New South Wales here in Australia have been kind to give us one of these to review. So, and we're gonna keep it for the rest for indefinitely. After we review it, we're going to be able to put all of our camera gear on there because anybody who's vlogged on a golf course in their life knows that pulling or pushing a golf car, all your clubs, they weigh 15, 20 kilos, you know, and then add on that another 10 or 15 kilos of camera gear, batteries, drones, stuff like that, this thing's going to come in great. So if you see this in any of the vlogs coming up soon, you'll know what this is and you'll know that there'll be a full in-depth review, Casey Neistat style review of this uh, golf buggy. And it is, it is good. Um, Pretty expensive, but you get what you pay for, I suppose, nowadays. So, look, um, oh, let's let's start off with the club of the month. Now, the club of the month was Pelican Waters. Now, we filmed there uh, almost a week ago. Um, myself, Charlie, uh, and Nick Young from the Hot Golf, we went there. Bit of the background on the story: uh, we went. Charlie and I played there probably mid mid early May, I think it was, and we were just going there. Our wives went out for lunch. And we went and had a game of golf and. It, we didn't really have a great experience and half it was mother nature the other half we thought was the golf course's problem uh, long story short we won't get into any, in, any negativity there but if you want to go back into hot golf and look for pelican waters review you'll find the video but by now you probably will see the the fresh video we did out there because they did invite us back they wanted us to come and experience it in all of its glory and honestly it, it did it was it was full on it was great they um did the, the issues that they had with the issues we had issues with uh, they corrected and it was it was a pleasant experience. It was really good um, I'll put up some drone footage now as you'll probably see the course itself was honestly probably the best I've seen I've played it three times now once a few years ago, and then in May just just passed now and then um, uh, About almost a week ago now uh, Beautiful it's a really nice resort style course I think the only gripe is that you know a lot of courses nowadays all have concrete parts They've got deco so they're at the mercy of the weather elements so if it's wet, you're going to go through potholes and it's going to be pretty bumpy. If it's dry, it's going to be pretty dusty, kind of like a country golf course fairway. But what can you do? Honestly, I think, you know, I just, Christine, my wife and I just did our concrete driver, which cost, Jesus, almost $10,000. So I can imagine what, you know, 10 Ks of car path would cost. I mean, Jesus Christ, that'd be incredible. I don't know. Um, but look, Charlie, Nick and I probably played skins. I won the first front nine skin that we didn't film. And the back nine I drifted off. I don't think I got a skin at all. I think I had I lost even the shout. I had the shout drinks at the end there. I didn't even complete the last hole. So uh, fantastic course. I think it's at the moment it's $79 with a car for 18 holes and a $15 bar credit. So that's probably on par for, for what it is. Anything more than that, there might be a bit of a stretch. If you get it anything underneath that, buy the Valka straight away, you'll enjoy it. But look, um, let's get into the charity day of the month. So our first submission video comes from Mick Innes. Now Mick is down from Melbourne, New South Wales, south down there. A lot of his charities are down there. Mick's been kind enough to send in a video of his charity. And uh, we'll let Mick explain it. So take it away, Mick. Hey, Brian and Charlie. Thanks for that uh, introduction. Uh, my name's Mick Innes, for those who don't know me. Um, tragic golfer for 30 plus years. Left-handed hack. Just call it what you will, I've been called worse, but uh, haven't had a hole in one. Haven't had a hole in one for those 30 years. Seen heaps, seen probably nine, ten go in off the trees, through the bunkers, and actually good shots, obviously. Uh, I'm not jealous about them, good on them. I love it, my turn hasn't come. So, I thought this year, 2017, I thought, I reckon I can do it this year. I reckon I can do it. So, I'm from Ballarat, and I got on Facebook just for some mates, and I said, listen, 50 of you suckers, put in 10 bucks each, back against me, I'll put up $500 my own coin. I reckon I'm going to do it. If I do, I want your $500. i will even add my $500, making $1,000. We'll give it to a local charity. Well, I put the word out and suddenly I had over 120 people. And uh, I thought, wow, geez, I didn't know I had that many friends. So out of that 120, one of them contacted Sportsbet 
and just said there's a bloke in Ballarat uh, having a crack at this hole in one. Would you be interested in getting on board? Well, to, uh, not, not to my knowledge, they got on board big time. They actually rang the golf show, Andrew Daddo and Paul Gell, the new, the new golf show. And before I knew it, I was down at Yarra Yarra Golf Course doing your segment. Some of you might have saw it. Actually, some good shots there, believe it or not. Um, that was a great experience. And uh, we decided on that day that um, the charity of choice is going to be MND Victoria. Now, a lot of you over the few, uh, last few months and, or last couple of years have seen Neil Danaher and Cure for MND. This is a separate organisation. Uh, MND Victoria only get 25% from the government, roughly. That's what they get funded. The rest is made up of hard work and um, you know, volunteers and fundraisers and all these sorts of things. So what MND Victoria offer is uh, aids for the houses like wheelchairs, shower rails, ramps, and they also offer palliative care for the sufferers in their final stages for the family. So that's a wonderful organisation. Um, I didn't actually know, I just thought the cure for MND was just a one big organisation, but that's actually two separate parts. So I've been involved with them, they sent me some stuff uh, to uh, promote and all that sort of thing. So what I want you to do by seeing this video is just have a look at the link. Um, I'd like to thank again Brian Deeb at Golf and Matthew Bailey from Golf Days Australia for giving me this opportunity. It's not about me, I'm just a left-handed hack who plays off, you know, a scratch one, one mark. Um, trying to get a hole in one. If I do, Sportsbet are going to donate a very, very generous amount. And off the cuff, off the record, they're going to donate anyway. But if I get it, I'm going to get them to double it. And it's going to be a very generous, a very generous uh, donation too. So whether I get 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, or even 50 grand for MND Victoria, it all counts. So by watching this video, I just want you to go to the link if you can and want. Please just donate, whether it's five dollars, ten dollars. $20 or $50, whatever you can. Please just donate, have a read of the story, have a read of MND Victoria. It might surprise you, these guys battle around to get their cash. Um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be trying, I'll be trying between now and the end of the year. If I don't get it for some reason, December 31st, whatever's in the uh, GoFundMe account, that will be drawn up as a check. I'll have the photos on Facebook and whatnot and for all you people to see. Um, get on there, it's very, very secure, extremely easy. And just have a read, have a read of the story. Um, just to show you what's in my bag, I'm a Callaway man. Uh, not that I'm going to be in the driver on a uh, par three, or well, who knows? I'm losing my strength day by day. But I've got a, I've got a Callaway uh, Epic driver. I've got the uh, Apex Pro irons from five down to uh, pitch, and then I've got the Callaway Mac Daddy uh, wedges and a couple of big Bertha hybrids. So uh, hopefully I don't need this sucker. This is just the Odyssey putter. Hopefully I don't want that on the par three, but we'll give it a go. Um, yeah, so just to, uh, just to recap, MND Victoria, wonderful charity. They, can, they need all the money they can get. Um, so please, uh, have a look at the link. Have a look at their story. And um, yeah, again, Brian Deeb at Golf, uh, Matthew Bailey, Golf Days Australia. Brian and Charlie, thank you very much. I will be trying for the hole-in-one. Good on you guys. Keep golfing, cheers. Alrighty guys, thanks for that Mick, that was great. That's fantastic guys. All of his details will be linked down the bottom of this video if you want to check it out. He's uh, a huge guy, a huge supporter of Golf Days Australia. He's always on there commenting, sharing, talking about his charity. He's been on quite a lot of videos too, so it's great to see a fellow Aussie doing his thing. So, look guys, we're going to get into the hot topic of the month. Now, I did a little bit of a teaser video, I think about two weeks ago, we were talking about the US Open, if you think the rough was too tough, stuff like that. Um, I think Kevin Nair and um, uh, who else? Lee Westwood came out and did a few funny videos. Well, Lee Westwood was funny. Uh, Kevin Nair, I think his name was, was a little bit more serious and one of the rules changes, stuff like that, which I understand his point, but I mean, I tell you what, if my job was to play professional golf and I had to do a rough like that to win $2 million, I think I'd suck it up and do it. Um, but look, some of the questions, some of the answers came back. We'll, we'll read about three. Louis Baggiato, he goes, I agree, mate. With that sort of prize money, I think it should be challenging. No different than maybe getting into the trees and taking two or more so shots to get out. Watching Jason Day, Rory and Rose missing fairways, I don't think would would make much of a difference to their game whether they played there or not. But all in but all in all a good open. Cheers mate, keep up the good work. Totally agree. If you if you're gonna be twenty meters left and right, then you, you need to deal with the outcome. So George Cassius also says too, I have no issue with how long the rough the rough was, the conditions were the same for everyone. 
the scores of the people that did well were quite reasonable for a major. The pros that had a whinge were, had persuaded the officials to trim the rough came across as sooks to me. I like how McElroy said they shouldn't have mowed it. It was good on him. I, I totally agree. I, I was quite amazed that you know a few pros could band together and influence that because at the end of the day, I mean, I, most of the guys who complained didn't even come anywhere near the end of the score. It was the guys who kept their mouth shut and played the game. Look where they are now. So, uh, Matt Green says, yes, the rough of the open was just another hazard of sorts. Given the openness of the course, really, it's a risk reward style course. So, yeah. Uh, Chuck reviews, he loves a rough, supreme golf. Uh, according to professional golfers, I found nothing wrong with the US Open. They are players at the top of their games and should be on for all these, up for all these challenges. If we didn't have challenges in our lives, we wouldn't be able to be where we are at this point. It's not like it's not like LeBron said Golden State needs to be benching Kevin Durant tonight because he's too good. Well, then, you know, that's actually a good point. Um, it's probably like, you know, not letting Michael Jordan play because he's going to score 40 points and it's unfair on everybody else. If you're not up for the challenge, don't take it. I actually kind of, I really do agree right there. Um, but look, that was it. Now, to get in a bit more of a comedy kind of sense, Charlie and I did try to do a US Open style challenge at Pelican Waters. Now, we'll, we'll do it over my voice here, here, I'll put the video here. It didn't really come out too well because it's hard in our country to try and find, to, rep to replicate that type of fescue, that kind of rough. So the best we found was kind of like a bit of a grass tree. We put the ball in there and we did it a few times and we were on the verge of snapping our wrist because this type of stuff was pretty, pretty thick. And we found the equivalent, which was, which was, which was just long grass with stalks, but it was just too easy to get out. You know, it wasn't catching the club shaft, it wasn't slowing it down, stuff like that. So this is where it was. We were aiming at a white pole down the fairway and I think I beat Charlie by five or 10 meters, which really wasn't a competition at all for both of us. It was just kind of hacking the ball out. There was nothing really to aim at, but look, have a bit of fun watching that now. It was just a silly thing. Nick was on camera, but yeah, we'll try and get a better challenge next month to try and do that. But I don't think we really, we really, we really have that kind of rough in this country. Um, up next, we're going to talk about the Forte golf balls. So Forte were kind enough to send us out uh, a dozen of each of their four style golf balls. We'll just put those some photos down below. Uh, Nick, Charlie and I all hit all four throughout the 18 holes and surprisingly, uh, we'll let you watch the video we do right now, surprisingly I actually preferred the second cheapest one, Charlie liked the cheapest one, the most expensive one, so it just goes to show you that each to their own and honestly if, if we didn't take the prices into account, I think we probably would have been blown away with what our actual favourite choices were. So. I, I've always kind of said that unless when you're hitting a golf ball, if you, if I feel like a pro and your face is your club is always straight every single time, then I understand why a golf ball means so much. You've got to pick the perfect one. But for me, well, my face could be going this way, could be going that way. Regardless of a $10,000 golf ball or a 50 cent golf ball, I know they're not that expensive, but you know, that expensive golf ball, if the face is going that way, it's going to go that way just as much as a cheap, you know, crappy tour flight uh, ballada, you know, whatever you want to call it, some crap piece of crap golf ball. So I think it's for me personally, um, unless I can get my swing properly down packed, then the golf ball itself really doesn't take too much into account. You know, the spins and stuff like that, I might not get as much check or backspin and stuff like that, but if I hit a bad shot, it's gonna be a bad shot no matter what kind of ball it is. So I really do think, I think they were $24 a dozen. We'll get into that into the video coming up next, but my favorite ones in Charles I think was 22. Um, but yeah, enjoy the video. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the show, Golf Days Australia Facebook page. Thank you very much to Matthew Bailey for letting us film the show. Mm -hmm. We're on the 15th here at Pelican Waters. Yeah. Nick Young, fan of the show. <laughs> Got the kangaroos in the background, mum's doing something. There's, right a, joe, there's a joey going in and out of the pouch. Didn't know there's a joey there, that's quite well, sinister. I think it's hanging yeah. at the back of the pouch. I think, no, I think, I think it's behind her now. Out, out of the side. Spoiler. I think, I think it's out. <laughs> so, product of the month is um, Forte Golf Balls. So we've all had a go at them. Nick has a, has had a few, I think. Yeah. Quite yeah. a yeah. Yeah. So, well, let's start. An entry level golf ball is the. Uh, the lowest. I think this one starts at twenty dollars for a box of twelve. Yeah. Uh, it's the SS3 Speed. It's called, and this is the distance ball. This would be comparable to like a, a section distance or a tightless velocity or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's an entry level, twenty dollars a dozen. And I've hit these a bit, and Brian's hit these a bit. Nick's yep. hit a few of these. Yeah. Um, they're not too bad. They feel lovely off the face, but obviously mm. they're not that sort of uh, same compressing ball that you get in the yeah. six-piece ball or something like that. So they're not too bad. Not too I bad. I think we're pleasantly surprised by the price of that. Yeah. Because at that price, you're usually getting like a, a Wilson or an Ultra, something that's very entry level, an yep. Optima, you know, something kind of like that, aren't yep. you? So. Yep. But then we go to the SSZ Soft. Yep. Now that was your favourite. 
Uh, for, for, for the entry level balls. For the, the entry two, level balls. Yes. Like, yeah. Yep, so I one. preferred that, Charlie preferred that one there, so yep. this was $22 or $24. Okay. So, sorry guys, we had to switch around, we had some sun issues and some people coming behind us, so we've both agreed, I suppose, for the two entry-level golf balls Forte brings out. I prefer the SSZ Soft and you prefer the... Uh, the SS3 Distant uh, Speed, it's called, it's a yep. distance ball. Mm -hmm. I, I love the feel of this off the yeah. face. I couldn't tell too much of a difference between this and something like my TP3s. Yeah. The old Pentas, you know, yep. not, not the TP5Xs or whatever. Like. It helped you keep yeah. up with Brian. Oh, mate. <laughs> Actually, they seem to retain their colour. They didn't get chopped up. No. Like a Pro V1 after a couple of knives can slowly get discoloured, chewed up, shit like that, can't yeah. it? So we've done that. Now we're going to the... All right. So now we're going to the Apex 6 and the Tool Performance S. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Now, so so just before we go there. So the SSZ, this mm. is the, the one that, that... It's an entry-level ball, the same as the SS3. Distance, uh, soft feel. Uh, that's about $24 a dozen off mm. the website. Yeah. Um, and then when it move to the Tour S, that's the next uh, one in their, in their line. Mm -hmm. uh, that's this one here, that next guy. Yeah. Tour Performance S, uh, I think they're about $40 a dozen. Yep. yep. No, I think um, this was the one for the bigger hitter that needs control, okay. from what I understand. And this one here is just flatter for bigger hitters with bigger ball, with bigger um, swing speeds. So this one's basically that was, the... Uh... Pro V1X. Yeah, I think I was saying anybody yep. over 110 mile an hour, that's yep. going to suit you. Which between is 100 and 110. Yeah. yeah. So that's like Pro V1, Pro V1X. Yeah. Kind of yeah. 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 So yep. that's the Apex 6. That's got the six piece that mm -hmm. we're talking about. Yeah. The Apex 6 Forte. Now, yep. 66 a dozen for the Forte Apex 6, I think. Yeah, 66 and a dozen. And forty dollars. And forty dollars. Yep. It's actually quite a price jump, but I suppose that's your six piece kind of. That's their version of a Pro V1 yep. or a high market. Yeah. High market versus ball. a three or four piece. I think it's a. So, so this is three, that's three, three and six. So they're all, this is three pieces. Well, oh, good cash. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So your rating, your ratings would go... Uh, with... I'd easily use the Apex 6 first. Mm -hmm. um, you're getting a lot more ball, like the price is up there, so it's comparable to Pro V1, so you've mm -hmm. got to see if it's it's worth it. It's probably $15 less than a box of Pro V1s, yeah, yeah, or, or ta uh, ta uh, tailor-made uh, yeah, TP5s absolutely. or something like that. I'd use the Apex uh, 6 first, I'd use the SS3 second, I'd use probably Sweet. the Tour Performance third, and the Softs, I didn't really like them, but I've got a different swing to these guys. But if I could get three of the, three dozen of these for one dozen of that, I'd be getting three dozen of these yeah, every definitely. time, based on the price. Like. Yeah. That's not to say I don't like those, but 22 bucks a do or 24 yeah. a dozen, that's good. Yeah. So, so what that you choose that first? Honestly, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. Over, over these other ones? Over the other ones, I personally would. Well, okay. But I would go Apex 6 after that. Okay. So, yep. I think. Because um, you can feel that. You can feel that Apex 6. Yeah. And I hit a shot before, it bit and spun back like a meter or two. You yeah, know, like, you did. So, yeah. And that was with the longer iron, too, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, guys, thanks for that. Alrighty, guys. So, that was, that was Forte Golf Balls. Now, Forte have given us some more golf balls to give away, so I'm going to talk to Mick Bailey and we're going to put together a competition for next month's show, which I'll announce the winner. So probably the next couple of weeks, look out on the Facebook, Golf Days Australia Facebook page, for a couple of questions for you to win some Forte golf balls. Now this competition is open for anybody in Australia. Apologies for anybody else outside Australia. Sending a dozen golf balls is just ridiculously overweight for how much they're actually worth. It'll probably cost more to send the balls than they're actually worth. So. But you never know if you if uh, if you really like some comment below. I can send Forte your details. They might send you out a couple uh, a tester pack of two golf balls in your favourite one. They're really really good at that, guys. Now, by now you're probably wondering about this. So we'll talk. We've, we've talked about it at the start. We'll talk about it just a little bit right now. Uh, Mick Bailey were hooked us up with um, Zippy Golf, which is based down in uh, New South Wales, have sent us one of these to keep and use. Um, this is one of their X demo ones. That's why they've given it to us fully submersible buggy into a foot of water. It goes up to, I think it's uh, 8K an hour, which is actually pretty fast considering golf's supposed to be a walking sport. Um, fully remote control. It actually has a USB point to charge your iPhone or GPS, which is incredible. Um, full 360 swivel wheel right there. Um, I won't show on here, but this has to be probably one of the most nicest interiors inside a seat I've ever seen. It's all felt and everything. Um, fully collapsible it does weigh a little bit but I suppose you're going to get that with any kind of motorized golf buggy but um, we'll get into we'll get into that a little bit later um, in next month's episode but if you do see it in some of the vlogs that's what it is it's a zippy part uh, zippy golf motorized trolley and I love those wheels now guys we'll just close uh, I'll do a little list as you'll see coming across the screen right now these are the golf days coming up in the next 
four or five weeks in the country right here. So we'll just go through the Mick Bailey events section on his Facebook page. So if you live around the country, you're traveling, if you want to get in one of these things, get in, you know, click on one of these events, have a look, get yourself into it, and then comment below if you actually played them, how it went, where'd you, where'd you go, stuff like that. Let us know, let's build the community. So, so my question for next month is going to be, if you had a bucket list major to play in, out of all the majors there are, which one would it be? Um, funnily enough, I would probably say me, British Open, because I think the bulk of people are going to say the Masters, US Masters. Augusta, I would say the US Open because I enjoy putting off the green from 100 metres out, so I know there I can do that. So technically I think a green in regulation and some of those greens is probably like 20 or 30 metres away from the pin, that's how big they are. So comment below your bucket list major to play. If you had one you could play in, not necessarily win or do well, not even make the cut. If you had one you could play in, what would it be? Alrighty guys, thanks very much for checking out this month's Golf Days Australia video. Thanks to Charlie and Nick for being on the show. Thanks for Mick Bailey and Mick Innes for helping out too. Next month we're going to have Busy Hippie Golf on the show. We'll try and get an interview of a few people too from the company. But yeah guys, thanks very much. Uh, next month we'll try and get out around a golf course somewhere, but we had a bit of wet weather here so it's huffed hard to get out. Um, yeah, two episodes down. Comment below, remember your bucket list uh, golf course to play on. Mine was the British Open. Um, St. Andrews, so yeah, let me know. Thanks very much.